Welcome to the Philadelphia Assembly. Shalom. Today is the 22nd day of the seventh month of the year 5776 on Yahuwah's uh, calendar. It's also October the 8th, 2016 on the Gregorian calendar, which we know is not correct. Okay? But there's lots of calendars out there that are probably not correct, and there's no 100% guarantee that the one that I'm keeping is correct. But, you know, I really need to have scripture to support why I do it, not just what somebody says about scripture. And I've been I've been doing this uh, really since about 2000. Uh, started coming to the truth of where I am now, obviously started in 1999 when we uh, learned of the seventh day Sabbath from the Adventists at a seminar they did. But in the seminar, they were talking about the new covenant and how the new covenant was to be written in our minds and in our hearts and that God's law would be written in our minds and our hearts. I realized then that there was a lot more to it than just the seventh day Sabbath, which is their main po focal point. They have reasons for not keeping the other appointed times. They claim that we will keep them in the millennia or in the new heaven and new earth. Uh, they also teach a doctrine that when uh, Messiah returns, that his saints will go off to heaven for a thousand years. So that's something we you'll have to research and study out if you're interested in doing that. It just didn't line up for scripture for me. My problem with them was Ellen White more than anything, and I have no problem with Ellen White because I, a lot of things she wrote I believe are true, but they kind of quoted her as God and made her a prophet and I got a problem with that just like I would if I was to call myself a prophet. Uh, I'm a, you know, I know that I'm a teacher and I know that she was a teacher. And a lot of, again, but in the sense that we today identify a prophet is not a good thing to uh, put on yourself. Let's go to Yahuwah in prayer before we jump into this. Almighty Father Yahuwah, we thank you for this eighth day, this celebration pointing towards the new heaven and the new earth that you're going to create at some point in time on your feast of, during your feast of tabernacles. Father, while we tabernacle in temporary dwellings waiting on the new heaven and new earth and that eighth day of acceptance that's all through scripture. Father, we just ask that your blessing be upon each one of us and that you would teach us all things whatsoever you've commanded to us. And Father, we ask Again, this message be your words and not mine. We ask it in your precious son, Yahushua's name. Amen. So I named this uh, study or teaching today, the narrow way and the many, because narrow is the way and few there that go in. Now, necessarily the way that I read scripture doesn't mean that this narrow way is right over other narrow ways. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say that I have all truth because I certainly don't. Uh, only thing I have is what I believe that the Ruach HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit has imparted to me. And if you feel that, then you, you go the way that you feel that he's imparted you to go. But when I first started keeping this, as I mentioned earlier, I studied, you know, first year, actually, I kept it like the group that I was with, which most people do, because you haven't come to that point of questioning how the calendar works. But after we kept it the first year, uh, we, my wife and I kept it, and we noticed that big harvest moon on the horizon was there. And then the next year, we were on the same calendar with the same people, and that moon was different. So it wasn't quite as large on the horizon, and, and it made us start to question why uh, or how does this do? Because we knew that we didn't do it the same as we'd done the year before, okay? And at first we, we studied it all out. I read everything I could find about the new moon because I understood that's how we, the head of the month, you had to discern where the head of the month was where you could know which day to celebrate the high holy days on or keep the feast of the Passover or any of them. So, as we started to study these things out, we first settled 
on the uh, first light. Uh, looked at all the things about conjunction. Uh, just didn't feel that as children of light and our father, the father of lights, and with Hebrews chapter, I'm not Hebrews, Genesis, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 14, says that those lights in the firmament would be for signs and for days and for seasons. And when you break that down, the Hebrew was mohadim, okay, which means, again, those set apart or appointed times of Yahuwah. So, I, I knew the light was the thing, but I, I, I kept doing it, but I felt unsure for many years as I was doing that. About three years ago, I stumbled onto the translation of Psalms 81. And I'm just going to read several translations of Psalms 81 from several different Bible translations. A couple of them are from either... Hebrew groups like the ISR, which is the Institute for Scripture Research, okay, which is a very good translation, I would say. Uh, King James is a good translation, but King James was was a Catholic, okay, and they didn't keep holy dates. So in their tra in the translation in the King James, it doesn't have a need to expound upon this in the same way as these other texts do. But I'm just going to read that, and I'm going to try to discern, as I discern, hopefully you'll be able to discern or discredit to your own understanding, Father. Uh, so let's, the first one is the New American Standard. That's a pretty widely used translation. And it says in, in uh, Psalms chapter 81, verse 1, it says, Sing for joy to God our strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. Verse 2, raise a song, strike the timbrel, the sweet sounding of the harp. Then verse 3 is the key to this. It says, blow the trumpet at the new moon, comma, at the full moon on our feast day. When I read that, it immediately caught my attention to the idea that this is saying the new moon is the full moon. And if you study all of scripture, you will not find any other phase of the moon. It'll talk about crescents in one point, and there's a word for that in Hebrew, and I didn't write that down this morning. But it never talks about the different phases of the moon. There's nothing else in scripture that tells us precisely what a new moon is. But if this translation is correct, blow the trumpet at the new moon, comma, at the full moon, that identifying what a new moon is on our feast day, which would be Yom Terim or the Feast of Trumpets, okay? Because that's the one that this, to me, you know, cries out as. And then verse two says, this, I mean, number two, here I have another translation, which is the English Standard Version. And it says, sing aloud to our God, our strength, Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Then verse three, blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. Psalms 81, ISR, again, the Institute for Scripture, Scripture Research. Shout for joy to Elohim, our strength. Raise a shout to Elohim, to the Elohim of Jacob. Lift up a song and beat the tambourine, the pleasant lyre with the harp. Blow the ram's horn at the time of the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day, our festival day. Num the next uh, translation is the International Standard Version. And it says, sing joyfully to God, our strength. Raise a shout to the God of Jacob. Sing a song and play the timbr tambourine, the pleasant sounding lyre along with the harp. Blow the ram's horn when there is a new moon, when there is a full moon. Now, again, some might interpret that differently. But again, I think that's telling you that the new moon is the full moon. Then this is the World English Bible. Sing aloud to God, our strength. Make a joy, shout to the God of Jacob. 
Raise a song and bring here the tambourine, the pleasant lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. This one is from J.P.S. Tanakh. Okay, that which is again uh, comes to a Hebrew translation. So it says, for the leader upon the, the Githith, a psalm of Asaph. That's identifying who wrote the psalm. Asaph was not only a psalmist, but he was a, also a prophet. It says, sing aloud unto God our strength, shouting to the God of Jacob. Take up the melody and sound the timbrel, the sweet harp with the psaltery. Blow the horn at the new moon, at the full moon for our feast day. So those are the, all the translations right there that you know I looked at that have the same one. Now there's others that translate this just on the solemn feast day. They don't identify the new moon. But if you go back, if any of you are familiar or use the tool Bible Hub, I, a lot of people I know they're using that now. If you go to BibleHub.com, put in Psalms 81, uh, hit search. You have to do that first. It'll pop up in the international version, in the NIV, okay, because that's the most popular translation on that site. Then you can uh, go to any of these other translations that you want. And there's many on there, okay. Once you get to Psalms 81 that you are interested in, then go beneath all the different translations. There's another bar under that. One of them says Hebrew. Click on that button that says Hebrew, and that will take you to a analysis of the text. And it will tell you exactly word for word what that's translated to. So study it out. Again, don't take my word for it. But again, we'll get back to the idea of narrow is a way. There's only one way this can be right. You know, it's not, I think it's the way I'm doing it. And some that do it by conjunction, I'm sure feel that they're doing it correctly. Those that do it by the crescent. We need to do it, uh, be fully convinced in our own uh, minds of the text. We need to study to show ourselves approved. Don't take someone's opinion, but... I feel like that right at this point in time, I'm keeping it in the best possible way I can. And if somebody asks me why, I can say because Psalms 81 says, blow up the trumpet or the ram's horn or the shofar at the, at the new moon or of the new moon at the full moon on our feast day, which again, I believe is Yom Terim in context. So let's talk about the, the straight way. I'm just going to read a few texts about that because we want to make sure that we don't cut ourselves off from the truth, whatever that might be. That's why I leave my mind open to change what I'm learning as I evolve into understanding as the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. I, I realize that, that, you know, our salvation depends on us listening to that and not being so concerned about the beloved or the groups that we study with and being different. Because in order to be that kingdom of priests, that holy nation, we have to be a peculiar people. And we're going to be peculiar because of our desire to do what our Elohim tells us and not what men. We don't want to be stuck in the traditions of men. Whatever you decide on, study it out and then you know, keep it in that way. And if you're not sure at this point in time, it's okay. Keep it the way the other people in your group is keeping it because you, the idea most of all is to keep these days, these appointed times. Same thing with the seven day Sabbath. I keep it on the seventh day of the week. As we see it, it would be Saturday, which we know is a pagan day. Some keep it according to the moon. So they say, the new moon is day zero. The seventh days after that, that's the first Sabbath. And then seven days more, that's the next Sabbath. So whatever way you do it, keep it with your whole heart and do it to the best of you, that you can. But remember, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 says, Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go therein. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life. And there be 
that <laughs> we there they be. Well, I'm sorry, there they be that find few there that find it. Mark chapter 13 verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? And Yahushua, or Jesus in the King James, answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. And, you know, we don't have to say we are Yahushua or Jesus to come in his name. We all come in his name, okay, if we are his, okay? So it, it, it says, therefore, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, or I am the anointed one. You know, the word Christ here means the anointed one. So all of us that are, have the Ruach or the Holy Spirit in us could say at some point we are anointed. Well, we are anointed, but we are not the Christ. We are not the anointed one and shall deceive many. And believe me, there's many people out there now that are deceiving many. And when you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be, not, be you not troubled. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places. And there shall be famines and troubles these are the beginning of sorrows. And we are absolutely in the beginning of sorrows. Are we in the great tribulation? I think not. I think we could be at the edge of it or we could be a hundred years away. We have no idea because it certainly isn't worse than it ever has been or worse than it ever will be. Okay. You can look back at Sodom and Gomorrah as an example. You can look back at the, the Christians in the Roman days when they were killing them in the catacombs, they're killing some now, but it's not everywhere as the text would discern here. Let's look at Luke chapter 13, verse 22, and see some more about narrow and few there that go in. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeys towards Jerusalem. 23, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? Well, and he said unto them, lost my spot. And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in. So as today, many are seeking to enter into the kingdom of God. And he but he says, enter in at the straight gate. And the straight gate's the one that's identified by scripture. Anything that man's opinion on scripture is not the straight gate. You have to discern the scripture and you have to have the spirit tell you which way to go. And sometimes we don't always recognize the spirit over our own mind, will, and emotions. So it says, and shall not be able. So many are trying to get in and will not be able to be at least in this priesthood in this first resurrection. When once the master of the house is risen up, and have shut the door, and you being to stand without, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, or Master, Master, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not, I know not where you are. Then shall you begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in your presence, and you has taught in our you have taught in our streets, but he said shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness or iniquity. There shall be there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of Elohim, and you yourself are thrust out. And that's not going to be till the second resurrection. And they will see all those things that are already standing in the kingdom. Because the rest of the dead won't be raised until after the thousand years are over per uh, Re Revelation chapter 20. Matthew 23, 1. Then spake Yahushua, or Jew Jesus, to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, this is my closing text. 
Now, a lot of people ask me, so why don't you just do what the Israelites or what the Hebrews or what the Jews do over in Israel? Because obviously they've been doing it longer, which is true, okay, than I have for sure. But we need to take this text into consideration before we just do what they say, okay? It says, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Now, what does that mean? Every Shabbat or high day, they sit in Moses' seat and they read from the Tanakh and most of all from the Torah. And it says, all therefore whatsoever they bid or read, you observe, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works or don't do what they do, for they say and do not. And if you study out the history, you'll see there's very much division throughout those people that occupy the Holy Land over there now on how they keep the high days, just like there is here in the United States in these in the bodies, in the body of Yahushua. Then it says, for they bid, they bind or tie heavy burdens and too and grievous to be borne. So, you know, they use the Talmud, they use whatever their traditions are, and they try to bind those on your back and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. That's no different than the teachers and the other groups. All they do is they do to be seen of men. Okay, we don't want to be doing that. We want to do because we're seen of Elohim or of the Father, Yahuwah. They make broad their uh, prost prostolaries. Okay, or their phylacteries, I mispronounced that, I'm sorry, which is talking about their zitzes, and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms of, at, a, at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues. And, you know, when there's these big feasts and things that are carried out here in the United States, or even over in the Holy Land, obviously men today still like those head seats at those tables, okay? Don't worry about all that. Just keep the feast where you are, even if it's just you and a couple other people, because it's not about being seen by men, okay? And greetings in the markets, and to be called of men rabbi or teacher, teacher. Be not, be, but be not ye called rabbi or teacher, okay? Now that word rabbi there means master, okay? But it also can mean teacher. For one is your master even the anointed one, or the Mashiach, or the Messiah. And all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. We know that's Yahuwah. Now verse 10. And some, but it's okay to say father. It's okay to say, if somebody says Jehovah, I'm sure he's still going to hear you. Okay? So don't get me wrong. I believe the term pronunciation in Yahuwah. But I could be wrong. Okay, but he is that he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. So the one that's the best and the biggest teacher that's the most recognized, he's going to be your servant. He should be your servant right now because that's the way the way Messiah was. He served the, the, the apostles or the disciples at the time. He washed their feet. He broke bread for them. He was their servant. And that's the way we should be. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased or brought low. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Let's all go to Yahuwah in prayer on this eighth day, as far as I can see in scripture, on this eighth day, this day of acceptance. Father Yahuwah, we thank you for what you've shown us. Father, we here believe that with all our hearts that the full moon is the new moon. It's because it, I believe it's written in your word. It's hidden in plain sight. Father, I just ask that as we walk this walk, it, that, we, that help us to stay on the narrow way and the straight way, Father, and that is the way of your scripture, your Torah. And we have to follow Messiah because he's the living, breathing, walking Torah. And for us to, to be in your grace, we have to be like him. Father, help us to be like him. Help us to walk that narrow way and help us to keep your commandments. Father, in whatever way that 
these people are keeping your feast. Father, we ask that your grace be upon them and, and on myself. Father, we all try to pick the right way, but we sometimes don't always. Father, we, we ask that you see are the discerns of our heart as we all keep these days to be pleasing in your sight. And we know that we have to be discern these things by the Spirit. Again, we ask that your blessing be upon all of us that have already keep, kept the feast, whether they did it because of the early barley rye harvest or they did it because of the full moon, new moon. And we ask your blessing on all those that will be keeping it here in a couple of weeks by conjunction or first light. We ask your blessing upon your people that love you, fear you, and keep your commandments. Father, we ask all these things in your precious son, Yahushua's name. Amen. And we ask that you all find a place to worship because we all need to congregate. We need to come together. These are not these appointed times are holy convocations. They're not meant for us to all keep them by ourselves. It, it sometimes is a small group. That's why wherever two or more are gathered in your in the Father's name, you there, Yahushua will be in the midst of us. And we're thankful for that. But Come together with believers, like-minded believers. And again, I didn't announce this at first, but you're, we're here at the Philadelphia Assembly. Our address is P.O. Box uh, 195, Stonefort, Illinois, all one word, 62987. Our physical address is 45 White Oak Street in Stonefort, Illinois. We welcome you to come to worship with us on Sabbath at 11. We look forward to having you here. And obviously, if you're somewhere else, we ask that you attend somewhere. And Father, we, and we also ask uh, that you remember us, that we have a Facebook page. We also have an email address. It's the Philadelphia Assemblies, IES on the end, at uh, gmail.com. So may God be with you until we meet again.